Vidalia, Georgia has been blessed by the bounty of a crop that won't grow anywhere else on earth, but it's been even more blessed by the people who grow it. Come on, let me take you where the food comes from. This is what Vidalia onion fields look like about six months out of the year from the November and December when the first little slips are set out here. They're lush and green and beautiful until one day in the middle of April when the Georgia Commissioner of Agriculture says go. And this happens. I don't know of any other crop or commodity where the state actually owns a trademark Georgia holds the trademark for Vidalia onions. You know, we have a federal marketing order, which is just like Washington State apples. There's a, there's a set of qualities, set of guidelines that something has to, you have to achieve that level in order to be called that. And our, ours, uh, Vidalia go back to the, the, the actual region, the all or parts of 20 counties in Southeast Georgia. It's really grown from being a specialty crop to actually opening the doors of opportunity for all those producers to actually be purveyors of onions year round. So that's been interesting to see that, that develop. The growers determined that it was the, maybe it was the best thing for, for the department to have the trademark. We have a licensing program that if you want to use it in a salad dressing, then there are royalties that are returned through the utilization of that trademark. They have built a very, very strong brand, one of the most recognizable brands that, uh, no matter where you're from, you've probably heard of it. The product has to be a free enterprise. The product goes into the hands of a producer. The producer does the magic. Each of them have their own different ways of, of, of producing their product. The ultimate judge is the consumer and those people that buy the product from them and, and they keep coming back for more, uh, more and more every year. So the state's role and the state's job then is to make sure that if somebody says, this has Vidalia onion in it as an ingredient, that that's real Vidalia onion. Make sure that it is, or if it's actually one of the fresh products that's produced after the packing date, uh, that, that, that it actually, and if it's advertised in one of, one of our retail partners, that that, that actually is a, a Vidalia. A grocery store in Michigan, I believe it was, that was advertising in, in the, certainly not during the season. Uh, they were advertising red Vidalia onions. Well, well, first of all, there's no such thing. Second of all, it's no way that it's gonna be in February. I, I, my memory tells me it was in February. It was sometime, it wasn't during the, wasn't during the season. Uh, for, our, for our legal division or, our, or one of our actual inspectors makes a telephone call to the proper management, usually you can, explain things sufficiently that they understand that that's not appropriate. We explain our role in that and uh, we explain that it'd be a really good idea to follow our rules or we, we have some pretty good uh, punch be behind our discipline. We measure our success by how well compliance is adopted. And that, that's, a, that's a different world for some people. We have to. Uh, but, uh, but, but if anyone doesn't think we don't apply discipline, let, I, let me assure you, because I, I, I signed orders yesterday. Producers in Georgia, but consumers worldwide and nationwide they can know that as long as I have anything to do with it, uh, when they see a Vidalia, it's gonna be a Vidalia produced in, the, in nature's favorite state, which is the state of Georgia. And it's produced by what I think are some of the best producers on the face of this globe. Vidalia onions are important to Georgia's economic engine, certainly, but they might be even more important to Georgia's heart and soul. What's the state vegetable? It's, it's, it's the Vidalia onion. Uh, we're still the peach state. Got a great generation of new growers that are coming along that are carrying that mantle of leadership forward. So I, I'm still very confident that there's a solid future for Vidalia. And, as long as we have anything to do with it, we're going to make sure that it's, it's protected and, and uh, we, we promote it to all our citizens.
I thought I was going to graduate from Georgia Southern and move to Atlanta and do something in business. Instead of going to Atlanta, he saw the farm for the first time and said, oh no, I'm going to stay on the farm. I suspect you had something to do with I it too. To. I wasn't going to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Megan, I was like, you know, baby, can you talk to your dad and them and they'd be interested in me working with them? Four months after we got married, I was on the farm trying to learn how to grow onions. And you look up one day, he comes to you and says, yeah. He knew I was wanting to buy the farm and him and I had talked about it and A&M Farms, A &M farms. that's farm. right, yeah. I so. think we can actually figure out what that means yeah, too. Yeah, that's right, the dots no and doubt, Aries and Megan. Aries and Megan, so works, doesn't it? we've definitely been blessed, let's just put it that way. You took the kid who was gonna go to Atlanta and whoo hoo and you turned him into a farmer and now you're farming with him. Yeah, and I'm just glad too that you know, my dad, this was what my dad did, and I'm glad that my dad can see it carry on. Because honestly, if my dad hadn't started this, it would have been a lot harder to get where we are. Everybody, when they hear the word cancer, it's like, Oh gosh, you know. All I could think about was my girls and what was going to happen to him and where that would leave us. Aries loves his girls and I just couldn't imagine anything happening to him. You know, like everybody says, just turn over to God. God will handle this. And until you get in that situation, you really don't know what, I didn't know what it meant until this. The night that we found out, the doorbell rings and it's a preacher from uh, one of the local churches here in town. He, you know, invited us to Easter service. He asked us before he left, he says, is there anything that I can pray over with y'all? And Megan and I both just fell out, like just bawling, you know? And it was just like, oh my gosh, you know, this is God speaking to us. And, and I'm telling y'all the journey from that day on, uh, was was amazing. We've still got every letter that got sent to our house, every piece of mail that got sent to our house from our family, our friends, our church, and we just sometimes go back through them and just think about God. And now we try to do the same thing, you know, when we hear someone sick or someone's, you know, we try to put ourselves like we we were there and and we try to do with them. We got through the 12 treatments and never lost my hair. I thought I would lose it. You know, I said, well, now I don't have to shave my head, but I didn't lose it. Um, I, thankfully, I never got sick. It, you know, I just, it was just awesome. You would not have known that he was sick unless you knew he was sick. I mean, his, his body language, his spirit, he just, you just wouldn't have known. You know, when we went back in that doctor's office after all the chemo and all the CT scans that they have to do and all that. And the doctor says, okay, you know, you're considered cancer free. And I know there's gonna be other downfalls in life because that's just the way life works. But I'm glad that right now we can do it together and face it together. And I'm glad that those girls get to grow up and know their daddy. And I hope that they can take on his spirit and his attitude and just go with it because it's just, there's just not a lot of people like Aries. Our purpose here is not just chasing the, some kind of fake dream. You know, our purpose is to try to figure out how to touch people and, and love on people and, and just be good folks to them. And when we make mistakes, learn how to um, get over them quick, apologize and let the water go under the bridge quick. Because you just don't ever know when it's your last time here or you know when the last time you'll see somebody or anything.
It looks like it should be easy. It looks like you just, well, what do you do? You just put a little plant in the ground and then you water it a few times and a few months later you come along and pick it up. It even lifts up out of the ground for you. Yeah, but you forgot the part where you bring your pillar and your bed spread out here and you, you live with these onions for nine months because it's a nine month crop. Most of the Vidalia onion fields that you're seeing in this episode were filmed at harvest time. If I had a time machine, I could take you back to say mid to late February. Well, I can do that because this is TV. This is what almost all of the Vidalia, Georgia region looks like this time of year, two months out from harvest. It's just a sea of green stretching as far as you can see. Amazingly, these plants have already been in the ground since November 9th. They're getting ready for a big sprint to the finish. We get our seed in August and we start planting, most people start planting their seed beds in September. We have certain times of the month of September that we put our beds in and then we work them beds on a small acreage and we get them ready. And then the first of November and December, we start carrying them transplants from the bed to the field and setting them out. And then you just have to baby them and start fertilizing and work them. And like I said, it's just a nine month process. We don't have any machines that once this onion gets ready, hand labor picks this onion, it cuts the top off of it, it cuts the roots off of it. And then we put them in these bin boxes over here and haul them to the package shed and dry them. It's a, it's, a, it's a process, but you know, it's a process we have figured out over years of which to do and how to do and that kind of thing. What works on my farm might not work on the other farmers right down the road, you know, so it's just, a, just something that's just, you just have to keep working at it and you just have to keep trying new things and you'll never get it right, but we just do the best we can. I will never forget it. The banker told her, told my mama, said, uh, Verna, Bo know, he knows absolutely nothing about farming. He needs to stay with Georgia Power. And my mama told him, said, uh, Don, we didn't come down here for no advice. We come down here for some money. You gonna let us have it or not? So folks asked me, Bo, why do you keep fighting the battle and keep building and keep, you know, just won't never stop? Well, I get up in the morning for my children and my family and the people that, that my employees and it just means a lot to me and that's why that's why I work like I do and 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 try to keep buying and building because I know I got a new, younger generation I've got and that's what we do it for is we work to support our families and to support other families and that's what the American farmer is all about is growing crops and feeding the world what are what are some of the other things that you're into because I know you're producing a lot of a lot of different things, a lot of diversity. I love my workers. My workers are my main people and they the ones that put money in my pocket and help me pay for my farm. And I knew I needed work, work for these workers to do a lot of the time. So we try to keep our workers busy at least nine months out of the year. You know, I wanted something to do in the winter time and that's another story back to Piggly Wiggly. Mr. Frank put me in the greens business. He said, why don't you grow some collards and turnips and kale and so I started doing that and then years later about five years ago uh, me and Jason decided we was going to build a processing plant and now we put one pound two pound bags of turnips kale collards so that greens operation is, is probably one of our biggest operations now. If you were just doing onions it'd be a lot shorter season. It'd be a lot shorter season be a lot quicker time to be in and out and if you lost that crop what would you do then you know I got my payments come every month they don't just come once a year. So. Well, they say the world population is supposed to double by 2050. Somebody got to feed all those people. That's right. And what most people in the country don't understand that, that as the people's doubling, there's less and less land to be farmed. You know, I put my land in a trust 10 years ago, so, so it stays with the farm and it can keep going. And that's what we need to do because there's always going to be a need for farmers. And I think the next 20 or 30 years, we're going to be in the driver's seat. So it's been a little bit of a combination of science, ingenuity, and miracle, all rolled into one big ball. Mostly the miracle. <laughs>
growing up in it, my dad was an onion grower. He was a farmer. He owned farm supply dealerships, and we were in and around farming 24-7, 365 growing up. Me and my two brothers and my sister were just inundated with farming. And so that's all we knew, really. And my dad was unable to keep going, had some financial difficulty in the 1980s with the farm crisis. And that was a, that farm crisis hit family farms all over America. Sure did, right? so sure did. He was financially strong enough to make it into the early 90s, but he couldn't go much further than that. And about the time I got out of college, I came home and restarted from scratch the family business. And you, you thought you were coming home to, to take over the family business and you actually were coming home to restart it. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we came home and dad, Set me down and said, "Look, I, I don't have any, uh, don't have any money. Can't help you get started in that way. But I can introduce you to some other, to some body onion growers, and maybe you can get into sale, selling some of their onions." And, I mean, it got so tough. I started taking real estate classes at night <laughs> at a, at a Votech. Heads in your bets, right? <laughs> hey, at a Votech school, 45 minutes away. I'm after work. I'm going. I'm driving to take real estate classes because that's my backup plan. Right. That's how unsure. I was in those early years, this is gonna work. I mean, it was it was tough. Sure. And so that's kind of how I backed into the industry, right? And over the years, we've been blessed to vertically integrate back into farming ourselves and kind of get back to our roots. Vidalia is just one town, but right now we're in Cobbtown, Georgia, and the offices of Schumann Farms and Real Sweet Produce are down the road a piece in Reedsville, Georgia. We're in Tattano County, and it's part of the mm -hmm. 20 county production area. And Tattano County produces 60 to 65 percent of all the Vidalia onions produced. So that's really the lion's share. Tattano County produces the majority of Vidalia onions in the world. We are part of several growers who produce uh, some of the highest volume of Vidalia sweet onions in the whole industry. And so when you think about the 20 county production area, and then you realize that 60, 65% of all that production comes out of one county. It gets a little bit smaller than it sounds. In the Vidalia region, it's a 12 month deal and it's a 12 month product and it's 12 month employment, even though you only got a five month crop. Hey, it's a six to seven week harvest. And then we, we sell them, pack them, ship them, distribute them for five, five months out of the year, the spring and through the summer. What makes it so unique and different is just the flavor, the flavor profile. I mean, you can literally eat it raw and you don't get that burn, you don't get the tears in the eyes. And If you understand what happens in Vidalia, Georgia, you are looking at a microscope view of the entire agriculture industry. A lot of sweat equity has been put into this product and a lot of uh, expensive lessons have been learned the hard way in building out this industry early to mid 90s. There was, some, there was just over 300 registered growers in this mm -hmm. industry. And like most industries, it's continued to consolidate and continue to, to grow out and the operators, you know, as demand grows. Today, you know, there's, there's you look at the Georgia, the list of Georgia growers in the Vida industry, uh, there's a little over 60, maybe 65 registered 65. growers. But when you consolidate those, like we're listed as more than one grower. Right. Most growers are listed more than one entity. Right. It's in it's thirty to thirty-five individual growers. So we've gone and from, that's, over that's 300, from over three hundred down to that. But down now, down over the course of that same time, your business, Schumann Farm, has grown exponentially. Your peers in the Vidalia Onion Committee named Schumann Farm. Vidalia Onion Grower of the Year. It came full circle for me and for us as a company. It's truly a testament to the entire team here at Schumann Farms and just the dedication and the work that everybody puts in. A really special moment. Made all the more special by the fact that your father, just a few years before, had been elected by his peers for the Vidal Young and Hall of Fame. We have not talked about Mr. Buck's comeback. There was a seed company out of Yuma, Arizona called him one day, said, Buck, um, we're looking for a seed representative and somebody to help us use their knowledge in agronomy and Vidal onions to help us develop new varieties for the Vidal sweet onion industry. 
And he says, well, I just happen to have the time. He developed some of the most popular sweet onion varieties in the Valle industry. And for a number of years, his varieties were the most popular, most grown uh, varieties in the industry. One of them that comes to mind is the Sapelo Sweet. So the seed company decided to honor him and name one of them Mr. Buck. That's pretty cool. So he had an onion variety named after him. And now he's been honored by Schumann Farms as well. The majority of your product comes to market under the real sweet label. It does. But you have another label now. We do. We developed a Mr. Buck brand of Idea Sweet Onions. With his smiling face right on the box and the bag and the label. To meet him is to love him and to see him is to see his smile and his humility and um, we wanted to develop Mr. Buck's brand to honor him and uh, to carry into our next generation. People ask me fairly regularly, Chip, is Vidalia a real place or is it just the name of an onion? Well, now you know. They're out here. Our neighbors are far apart but close to heart and people live on roads named after them. This is where the food comes from.